my darlings. <laughs> Do you know what's really funny? I Someone left a comment on one of my really old videos, like four or five years old, um, and I wanted to know what they were referring to, so I clicked on it, and one of my old videos just started automatically playing, and I didn't start by saying, good morning, my darlings, or hello, my darlings, and it just sounded so strange, without even meaning to. It's just like become the opening phrase. <laughs> It, it just felt so weird. I was so gangly and awkward. It was like, hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. It just sounded so odd. As you might be able to tell, I'm in a much better mood this morning. If you watched Tuesday's vlog, you'll know that I obviously only finished filming that yesterday, but yesterday I was just so, I think I was just overwhelmed. I was having a bit of an anxious day. Maybe I had too many co- In fact, maybe it was that I had too many coffees. And it was just literally an example of getting out of bed on the wrong side. Not, not literally. Um, and then everything going wrong. Everything that could have gone wrong <clears throat> yesterday did. <laughs> um, I don't even think I ended the vlog properly because it was just one of those days and then Charlie and I couldn't be bothered to cook anything for dinner. Luckily we have some like vegan frozen meals in the freezer so we ended up having a cashew and chickpea korma which was delicious actually so yeah <laughs> today's a much better day it's blue skies ish outside i've made myself a great cup of coffee i've also made the nicholson's chaps their cups of coffee they're happy i think we're going to be seeing amazing changes again in the garden today they're finishing off doing the turfing which again i showed you in yesterday in tuesday's video it's looking amazing um and i think they're going to do the chicken wire as well so so that the dogs can't escape out the garden down the bottom anymore. And then next week, I think we've got them here for just over two weeks. I think maybe today they'll finish the turfing and the chicken wire, and then hopefully they'll start to do the more visual stuff, planting the magnolia tree. We've got three more trees, I can't remember what they are, Charlie will definitely know, that are going down the end of my kitchen garden, just to create a little bit more screening. And then the area that's behind you right now is going to be a new flower bed. So. I'm really excited for that. I also placed the world's biggest <laughs> flower bulb order on my phone this morning. Very much a victim of social media marketing, but when it's targeted in a way that Farmer Gracie target me with their ads, <laughs> I'm like, take my money. You've, you've done your job. Whoever your ad provider is have found your ideal customer. <laughs> And they served me an ad for bulbs to plant in autumn, to buy now, to plant in autumn that'll blossom next spring. And let me tell you, I spent hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of pounds on bulbs this morning um, because I just want to be able to feel the joy of our garden as early as possible. I want to fill all our planters with tulips. I want to plant daffodils. I've, yeah. Come autumn, hopefully I remember that I've placed this order because I think I'm going to be getting a very big box from Farmer Gracie and I'm definitely going to have to call all my friends over for a bulb planting party because I would say I have ordered over a thousand bulbs. Some of them was like a pack of a hundred or a pack of 30. I think it's my biggest ever gardening purchase, <laughs> but I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm actually roasting stood here, so I'm just gonna loosen up my dressing gown a little bit. I was thinking about all of the containers that I've been using in the garden and in the greenhouse. If you've been following along, you'll know that I have just been trying to reuse everything. It's almost, and I always, I always take things too far, but I have literally been saving everything from like takeaway food containers to trays that my paint has arrived in, egg cartons, coffee cups. So my greenhouse does look a little bit like, well, it looks quite shambolic <laughs> at the moment, but this mindset of trying to reduce waste, especially in gardening, there's a lot of plastic in gardening. So I have been trying really hard not to, well, I have not been buying like loads of plastic pots or plastic seedling starting trays. So I guess this year will just be my trial and I'll see if it worked. Um, I will be composting most of the stuff that I've been growing the stuff in, like the loo roll tubes for example, my French beans are literally planted in the loo roll tubes, so hopefully that's like a massive waste reducer. 
Um, and I guess from maybe like January next year, I'll start to save up loo roll tubes and things again because I don't need to <clears throat> save them over winter because I probably won't be growing anything. But I think I'll be a little bit more streamlined next year. I'll know what things will become good planters. But um, I thought on that kind of theme, I'd go through a few of the ways which <clears throat> I think are amazing ways of reducing waste in my beauty routine. When I, whenever I have my um, chiro chiropractic treatment, I always quickly run into the bathroom and use a face halo to take rid of, take rid of, get rid of <clears throat> the majority of my makeup before a treatment. And this isn't like a proper, proper cleanse. It does get rid of most makeup, but I've used it before on the vlog camera. Run it under some nice warm water, swish it over the face, and it gets rid of most of your makeup, so it's a really good first cleanse. And obviously you just pop it in the washing machine, so you're not having, obviously I feel like no one <laughs> uses face wipes anymore. We all know that they are the worst thing in the world for our skin and for the planet, and literally clogging up all the systems, landfill, <laughs> arama. Um, but these you just stick in the washing machine. I've used these literally a million times and they're still perfectly white. I whack them in with my towels. These haven't even been through the tumble dryer, but they're still nice and fluffy. So this is a really great way of removing makeup. It's obviously not just before my chiropractic treatment either. Um, that's just an example of when I need to quickly get rid of some makeup. You could do this after getting home from work, get rid of makeup and pollution from the day. So this is my number one tip. My first tip, for reducing waste in your beauty routine and I've converted so many of my friends to a face halo. I use it once, usually just once in the evening and then pop it in the wash bin and I have about seven, maybe or seven to ten of these so I'm never caught short. Along those same kind of lines is the reusable cotton pads. I've been using reusable cotton pads for many years now um, just to save the plastic around cotton wool pads and the actual throwing away of cotton wool pads. I try to just throw away as little as possible within my beauty routine. Obviously not everything is made plastic free there's not plastic free options for everything so i feel like i feel like no one should be made to feel guilty like sometimes i see people talking about sustainable options and then people snap back and say oh but you use xyz and i don't think that's the right mindset i think people should make changes where they can um and if your one change is switching out a product for a less plastic heavy version then that's an amazing change it takes millions of people doing things imperfectly than a few people doing things perfectly to make a difference. I didn't just make that quote up, it's like all over environmental <laughs> Instagram pages and things like that. So reusable cotton pads, I'll leave my favourites linked down below. I actually need to buy a new um, wash bag because mine is very old and the zip has just broken. So I'm going to buy a bigger one from Intimissimi or just literally Amazon. And then you, again, just stick them in the wash with your bedding or your lights or your towels. I have never found my makeup to stain anything else in the wash. Maybe if you wear really heavy makeup, it might be something to consider, but it's never been a problem for me. And something else which is new to my reducing plastic beauty routine is something which I think you guys will find really interesting. And I think a lot of you might need converting. I feel like this is the hair care version of um, powder foundation. And I hate calling the Bare Minerals Original Foundation, I hate calling it a powder foundation because it's really not, but it's one of those things. The reason why I'm comparing is because this is a solid shampoo bar from L'Occitane. And I'd heard a couple of people talking about them and I was like, nah, that's not for me. The same way as I heard loads of people talking about this. And again, I was like, nah, it's not for me. And then when you try these products, you're like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> now I see why everyone is raving about them. So Bare Minerals Original Foundation. Now I couldn't even tell you one of my friends that doesn't use that because it's fantastic. <laughs> but some people are maybe initially scared of the texture, thinking it's gonna be dry. But that's a digression. So L'Occitane as a whole is a brand that for me, I always think about them as being really at the forefront of sustainability. If you think back to when the brand started in the 70s, back in Little Provence in France, the, they used to ask people to bring back the glass containers to the store so they could refill them. And that was, that was before anyone really cared about like the planet, could care, cared about sustainability, but L'Occitane did. So that's, and, they, and they've had 
this approach since their conception, which is really lovely, and yet none of their products have ever the quality of their products has never been sacrificed because of this sustainability. It's just so inbuilt into the brand and that is why I absolutely love them. They have been real pioneers when it comes to making products from not only recyclable but recycled materials and that is so, so important. So they're <clears throat> I think it's since 2008. Their five essential oils hair care collection has been made from recycled and recyclable plastic um, materials, which is incredible, but this is the newest part of their plastic free movement. And this is literally plastic free, not even anything recycled or recyclable. When you buy this, it comes in, and I'm very sorry, I actually <laughs> got this out of my compost to show you. So this is the packaging that it comes in, absolutely no plastic. It is literally a recycled and recyclable little cardboard box. So there are three different shampoo bars from L'Occitane. My personal favorite is it called Repair and Protect. Intensive Repair Solid Shampoo. So this is great if your hair, especially like mine, is colored. Maybe you find the ends are a little bit brittle, a little bit dry, as you might be able to guess from the name or the collection, Five Essential Oils. It's got the lovely oils in there, which really nourish the hair. And this one also has oat amino acid in there, which again is great for building up the hair again, so fantastic for repair and restructuring. So for me, for my personal hair type, this is amazing. But I have also tried two of the others. There's one, I think it's called Gentle and Balanced. That's the one that when I start going back to the gym, I think that's the one that I'll pop in my gym bag. Great for regular use, just really nice, a really fresh clean. Um, again, oh, these would be fantastic as well for traveling. Just pop it in your, your travel makeup bag. So there's Gentle and Balanced. And then there's Pure Freshness. And Pure Freshness is, as you might be able to guess from the name, really lovely. And lightweight for the hair, great for normal to slightly oilier hair. So you can really choose, just because you're switching to a more sustainable option, it doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice your hair's needs. So they have got a few different kinds. They've got a very light smell to them. I wouldn't say they're overly scented, just a really pleasant fragrance. And yes, I did actually film a few clips in the shower to show this to you guys because I'm gonna hold my hands up and say I was really a little bit skeptical about shampoo bars. I love a lather, or is it a lather? I love getting that foaminess in my hair and I'm gonna stop holding it because actually I'm starting to melt it. <laughs> I just feel like, I, maybe it's psychological because some other shampoos that I've tried in the past haven't lathered so much and my hair has still been clean, but maybe it's just like part of the pampering experience. I love to feel like I've got a lot of bubbles in my hair and I didn't think I could get that with a shampoo bar, but I will show you a clip on the screen here of me using this. What I do is I get it a little bit wet um, between my hands and then I kind of rub it onto my scalp as well. I find that I'm using less product. Like I, to be honest, thought that this bar would maybe last me three washes. I thought I'd be really like scrub, scrub, scrubbing to try and get that lather. No, I have already had this one. This is probably my, it's probably been used about 10 times um, and it's not really gone down in size at all. It's a very ergonomic shape, so it just fits on your head quite nicely. So yes, you are able to get a really nice lather, lather to your hair and it just feels really, really lovely and clean. You're not sacrificing that clean feeling by using a shampoo bar. So the way that it works, the way that my hair feels afterwards, I'm gonna do my hair in a second. It's currently just like bed head, so I'll, I'll do, my, do my hair with you in a second so you can see how it looks. But yeah, let's compare it to a traditional shampoo and conditioner bottles. This is actually one of my favorite ranges, the almond oil range from L'Occitane. It's a very delicate conditioner. Also love the shampoo from this range. Also love the body wash and body awesomeness range, which you can also get in reduced plastic packaging. So you can get refillable pouches. I've got one upstairs, I'll show you in a second. That's another thing that Lox 10 really pioneered was um, refillable products. Because obviously if you get the product in a little pouch as opposed to a bottle every single time, that is massively reducing your plastic consumption. But then when you compare the fact that a shampoo bar like this comes with zero plastic, I think this is around 30 grams of plastic in this and there's quite a few different components. Obviously different shampoo bottles are built differently so some parts of your shampoo bottle might not be recyclable at all but even though this is made from recycled and recyclable plastic the best option is always to try and cut plastic out entirely. 
Also cost wise, this is £10. I do have a discount code, which is Josie10. That'll save you 10% on the Lux Tan Boutiques and in stores as well. £10, £19.50. So you're actually making a really fantastic saving cost wise when switching to a sham shampoo bar as well. And as I said, I do find that I use less product. So this will actually last me longer than a traditional bottle of shampoo. So overall cost saving, planet saving, space saving oh and they are also silicone and sulfate free so i feel like it goes without saying when brands care a lot about sustainability they also care about the kind of ingredients that we're putting on our skin on our hair and so loxtan have taken out those nasty ingredients it's literally the essential oils that are cleansing the hair and nourishing it in the nicest way possible so I might have a brand new one upstairs I can show you, um, but you can see just how cute it is. Just something that I am really happy to tell you about, because like the powder foundation, I feel like a lot of people may be put off by the idea, but then once a friend or someone tells you, actually guys, it's really, really good and it's a bit of a game changer, you just have to try it one time and then you'll be converted, so please, do give it a try if you have already switched to solid shampoo and let me know in the comments below i'd love to know if you guys have already tried it or if you have any reservations about trying it let me know my number one was just like i want to get that lovely pampery lava didn't think i could get it but you can get it with this so give it a go i'll leave a link down below and yeah don't forget to use the discount code josie 10 and you can use it in store and online okay I'm going to do my makeup. Don't think I need to run through that <laughs> with you guys again. And I'll catch up with you in a month to do my hair. <laughs> looks a little bit crazy when I have just curled it but I like to let the curls cool down while they form and I find that that actually makes a big difference to how long they last. I have recently been going back to my coral. It's quite weighty, I feel like it's a little bit of an arm workout um, but I just feel like the flexibility of it being wireless enables me to just get better curls all the way around my hair. Um, so I think it is time that I can brush this out now, but I just wanted to show you how my hair looks now that it's dry and styled so that you can see that there is absolutely no like heaviness, um, still nice. I think it's very hard for blonde hair to add, especially colored blonde hair to look healthy and dare I say it, shiny just because of the nature of putting bleach on your hair, it literally sucks all the moisture. So any shampoo that I feel like my hair is able to have any shine, I'm a huge fan of. As you may be able to tell, shine is <laughs> something that um, I experience a lot of. I did actually already powder this morning, but obviously the weightlifting <laughs> of doing my hair has made me need to top up. I thought I'd put on a cute dress today because I'm no longer saving anything for best. And I've just popped on this lip gloss from the L'Oreal. Someone actually left me a comment saying it's Ely Saab. Didn't know that that's how you pronounce it from their collection. And it is such a lovely shade. I miss wearing glosses. I haven't worn lip glosses in quite some time, but I did promise I would show you the other refillable bits from L'Occitane. So this, I forgot they do this, I found this in my beauty cupboards. So this is the crunchy muesli scrub, you can fill the beautiful glass jar up with that for a nice exfoliation. And then this is the almond shower oil, which is just one of the best, if not the best shower oil in the whole world. It is so moisturising if you love the smell of almonds slash marzipan then you'll love this and this is 78 percent less packaging waste so once you've got the actual pump or even if you've got some lovely refillable bottles in your home already or in a holiday rental wink wink nudge nudge then this is a great way of refilling without having the expense or the plastic of um the original style of packaging so i'm just going to add a little bit of hairspray again this came from the um lovely 
bridal package that I got from L'Oreal. Remember my tip? Spray from underneath. Gosh, that smells good. Elnet in Love. Ah, a new fresh floral fragrance. That is gorgeous. I normally hate the smell of hairspray. Love. Officially my new favorite hairspray. That is absolutely gorgeous. And I found another one in my cupboard that I haven't uh, completely ruined the packaging of. So this is the Purifying Freshness Solid Shampoo. So this is literally all the packaging and a beautiful, fresh, unused shampoo bar looks like this. So it's really, really lovely, very small, perfect for traveling and generally just a fab product. Still got my slippers on because I'm just working from home again today, but I wanted to show you this gorgeous dress. It is such a lovely print. It's not really toile de jouy, but you've still got those kind of, um, apparently toile de jouy fabrics were always about storytelling. So you could see like either a farmer doing all his agricultural bits and bobs, or you could see like, um, I don't know, what are some old fashioned trades, like a haberdasher or a dressmaker, that would be a story that was told within a toile de jouy, whereas this has got like more kind of a tropical print to it, just a really nice lightweight dress. As I said, I don't like saving things for best and if a dress is comfortable, I can easily put this in the wash if I get a mark on it, but why not wear something that you feel good in around the house? Yesterday, I was wearing jeans and um, like high-waisted cream colored jeans, a belt. I just, I didn't actually feel that comfortable in them, both when I looked in the mirror and also physically, like the fabric of denim, I just don't really get along with. So back to my dresses. Anyway, the reason I came up here actually is because within this vlog, we'll be seeing an epic, let's go over here, um, transformation of this space because tomorrow I will be getting a very, 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 very exciting delivery from George Smith. So it's going to be my cloverleaf poof and the matching footstool and I cannot even tell you how excited I am. It's going to completely make this room look a million times more fabulous. It's going to be a beautiful place to just lounge and sit and have friends sit while we're getting ready. Do you know what I really cannot wait for? Which we have not been able to experience this whole time living in this house because obviously COVID. I can't wait to just have loads of girlfriends over here all doing our makeup together, all getting ready for, I don't know, going out for lunch or not that we're going to be going like out out anytime soon slash ever again. How do you guys feel about nightclubs in a post COVID world? I just I can't think of anything worse. But yeah, I just can't wait to like have loads of girls over, loads of friends and have some champagne in here, celebrate the end of COVID. Maybe that's getting a little bit ahead of myself, but yeah, it's gonna be the most amazing bit of furniture. It's gonna really finish off this whole area. So I'm so excited to show that to you. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm having a little bit of a a princess moment from one lovely dress to another. So Lucy and I are just about to head to a nearby woodland to shoot a reel in the bluebells and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to wear my gorgeous needle and thread dress. I mean look at this, I just love this silhouette, it is absolutely gorgeous. If you look closely it's actually got a little bit of a kind of checkered print to it and the material is just so voluminous with this frill detail on the tool and then you've got more of like a traditional and if you can see on the lining the check pattern but this silhouette oh i need to take the label off yeah this silhouette i think is my favorite for a beautiful dress now i'm trying to think when i can actually wear this in real life because it is just Spectacular, and I can't stop looking at it in the mirror. <laughs> have been able to guess. We have come to the Bluebell Forest. I don't even know what name this woodland has but there is a public footpath that I've just been trotting down that leads you straight through the most beautiful like rolling hills and the bluebells are absolutely in their peak. We actually came here before the bluebells bloomed to get the first half of a reel and now we're going to shoot the second half so it should look rather cool so please do head over to my Instagram. I haven't edited it yet but I feel like it's going to be one of my best so please do go and check it out. The 
dress is just perfect for this location. Lucy is doing a location scout to find a tree that's a little bit backlit. I love to be backlit in my snaps, but have a look at how stunning this place is. Charlie and I came here last year and I think I did a, I did a post and it was obviously like during the first lockdown. I did the Dumbledore quote, even in the darkest of times, magic can be found if only one remembers to turn on the light. And I think that post got the most likes ever I've ever had on a post aside from our engagement picture. So maybe we can find another fabulous quote for this year's Bluebell Snaps. Bluebell expedition. We've just oh, okay. taken delivery. It was amazing actually. Successful. Yeah, pouring with rain half the time, but I think we got some shots. Yeah. But Charlie's just received a very exciting delivery. My first by Rado fragrance. Their bottles are so lovely, aren't they? Do you know what though? I've always loved um loved that what is it gypsy water? Yeah. That's the one that but this is called open sky. I don't want to call it that. Like, is that not a bit politically gypsy incorrect? Water. Well I don't know. It's not the word I know gypsies are like you're not allowed to say other words, but I, I really fine, don't, I don't know anymore what you're allowed to say, but um, <laughs> yeah, very Can't very keep up with the kids these days. No, but um, this smells amazing. What flavour is this? Well, it's called Open Sky. Mm. I don't know if there's a note with it, with what notes it has it in. A well, note with a note? research. Well, let's do a smell test, let's oh, see how... From, oh, they're Swedish. Oh, you can kind of tell from the design, can't you? Yeah. Right. Smell that. It reminds me... There was a fragrance called... Wow, yeah, that's, that's unusual. I, that's grapefruit. Yeah, it's quite citrusy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's quite a summery fragrance. I really don't like the taste of grapefruit, but I love the smell. Can I have a look? Yeah, does anyone like the taste of grapefruit? My mum does. She'll have grapefruit juice. <laughs> yeah, that is lovely. That's yeah. a very nice summer fragrance for you, because I think yeah. your existing favourites, like Tom Ford Ombre Leather, are quite wintry, aren't they? I think wearing Oud on a warm day is extremely punchy. Like, if you want to make a statement when you walk into a room, mm. wear oud on a warm day, but you would only wear it every day. You're going to have to lock that up, because that's the kind of one that I'll steal. Yeah. <laughs> well, today's lunch certainly isn't a looker, but it smells pretty good. This is spinach and ricotta gnocchi with a butter and cheese sauce, <laughs> yum yum. So I'm gonna eat this while watching my current favorite program, which is Netflix Stay Here. It's all about turning properties into great Airbnbs, essentially. There we go. So I would say pretty good research. Well, tragically, it turns out that I have actually watched all episodes of Stay Here. So I ended up going back to watching Below Deck. But I've just brought you outside to give you a few more updates. And yes, I have got changed into a far more practical outfit of the day. The green in the pond is slowly starting to um, sort itself out, which is great, because I'd really like to put some pond plants in here at the weekend. But here we have, I don't know if you guys will remember what this area looked like before, but basically this area behind here has all been turfed. So it looks, this is like a fantastic extension of the lawn now. Um, I am planning in autumn to put a lot of my bulbs here. It's such a great area, it's gonna be fantastic when um, these trees get a bit bigger. I think I'm gonna swap the grain planter there for my compost box, because I think that'll be a great spot. Look at the pigeons getting their, their feathers washed by the sprinklers. And then this concrete block over here, which is where the old owner thought they might put an oil tank, we're breaking that up and putting turf there as well. The chaps are now moving a magnolia tree and it's gonna go in this big pot here. And it's about to bud, so it's gonna look rather fantastic. Um, and it'll be glorious to see from the window. Tree and coming. I have just received a another Instagram made me buy it purchase here actually. So this, <laughs> and actually this is something else that Instagram served me as an advert. So maybe the Instagram algorithm does have some use after all. But basically this, um, I, I see loads of these popping up at the moment, these like tablescape companies. And you can either cherry pick some various bits and bobs or you can literally buy like a full styled set. 
And this brand, Maison Margot, came up in my sponsored stories. And I just thought how gorgeous it was. And especially as we, Charlie and I, as you may have guessed, we love to host. We are nearly always the friends that have people here. We always really enjoy having dinner parties and brunches. And now that we've got this lovely house, we definitely want to, you know, just even step that up even more and have even more things here. So I feel like lovely tableware is a great investment. And even when these things get a little bit like old and scratched and battered, I think it just adds to the charm of them. So really love this set. I'll show you what I got. Um, I think I got place settings for eight or was it six maybe by the looks of it. And I went for this greeny colour. I thought it's never going to go out of style. It's always going to look great in our garden, obviously with the idea of having this out on the patio. So I chose this tablecloth and it's a really nice material. It's like um, quite a rustic kind of cotton with this floral design on it. Nice big tablecloth. And then what you're meant to do, I think you're meant to do this plate, obviously on um, the mat. Did I get six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, perfect. I did also order another pattern, another style, but I think that it's um, currently out of stock, so I think they're sending it to me in a couple of weeks. This is all obviously purchased, by the way, not um, not gifted. I just bought this like a normal customer. So let's have a play around with creating a place setting. I have to say on this website, it was really hard to choose which design I wanted because they had just so many gorgeous place settings. I could quite happily have spent thousands of pounds on this particular website. So I didn't buy any new cutlery or anything, but if we were to start with the mat and then see it looks really nice with the kind of fanning out of the various bits and bobs and then the plate and then we got, we've got a contrast plate with a little bit of fluting around there, scallop around the edges. I think that looks really nice how they look layered together. And then to be honest, I'm not sure if I'll use these napkins with this set or not. I do always switch up my napkins. It's probably not quite the right shade of green. Um, and I'm not sure that these go with this set either, but they're still really fun. I do have what I, to be honest, what I normally do is I actually wrap up my um, napkins in like a hessian string with a cutlery inside and I think that looks really cute. But just to show you the full set, let me put this together. Well, to be honest, that does look really, really cute, but I think that the lemon um, is not quite the right style for this, which is a little bit more traditional. But as I said, I do have other bits and I do tend to usually go for more of like a hand-tied string. But you can see how this looks and it's just so and it's just so beautiful having a really nice cluster. I want to definitely get better at doing tablescapes. Um, I always see people like Rosanna Falconer. I'll leave her Instagram down below. She does the most beautiful tablescapes with little posies of, of um, flowers. So I definitely need to take a leaf out of her book. So yeah, I have this place setting enough for six people. And I do have some other bits from them coming in a couple of weeks or so. But don't you just think that is absolutely gorgeous. I'm really, really happy with that. Well, how lovely is this? This is a delivery that has arrived from one of my lovely followers. And by the way, I have to let you know that I get so many emails and messages and I could not even tell you how often you guys email me saying, hi Josie, I must be your oldest follower. I'm in my 50s, 60s, 70s. Honestly, guys, you are not alone if you are in my more mature age bracket. I have more I'm obsessed with looking at my demographics and my data. I have more 50 plus subscribers than I do have um, 24 and below. So actually I very much have an older demographic for my YouTube channel, which I absolutely love. And this has, a, I'm not, I don't know how old um, lovely Jan is, but I just thought I would mention that because it's so funny how often I get an email saying I must be your oldest subscriber. But anyway, this has just arrived. I believe this has come all the way from Charleston, Carolina. I was meant to visit Charleston with Freddie last year and obviously it didn't happen because of um, COVID. But hopefully I would just absolutely love to visit one year. And she sent me this lovely note and a book all about Emily Whaley in conversation with William Baldwin, Mrs. Whaley and her Charleston garden. And Jan's left me a little note why she loved Loves this book so much. Looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to really enjoy having a flick through here. I'm going to pop it on my bedside table and enjoy a chapter or so before bed. So Jan, so kind of you. Thank you so much for 
for sending such a thoughtful gift. Good morning, my darlings. It is now Thursday. I had to check what day it was then. I am literally just sat here looking at the clock and waiting for today's really exciting delivery. So my poof and my footstool from George Smith should be arriving between one and three. And I don't think I've been this excited about a delivery in so long. I just think it's gonna make such an epic difference to my dressing room. I'm imagining what kind of reels I could film as a reveal reel, although you'll probably see it in this vlog anyway before I post anything on Instagram because I want to do something quite jazzy. But I'm just so excited. George Smith furniture is literally top, T tip, tip, top. It is a brand that Charlie discovered from chatting to various people at Soho Farmhouse because they've got some really lovely bits there. As you may know, we have four bits of George Smith furniture already. The two armchairs in our living room and the two amber coloured armchairs in the drawing room and we're really thinking we might get a sofa, another big George Smith sofa in the drawing room as well but yeah i'll show you all the bits when they arrive i'm just so excited charlie's on his way to quince and clover right now to go and get us some lunch i have just requested a soup but he doesn't normally like it when i get soup instead of the usual like cold bits because um you have to wait like 10 minutes for the soup to be ready whereas obviously the cold bits is just kind of like help yourself but yeah i'm literally just like wasting time now i can't even really concentrate on work i've actually gone through and i think i've tackled all of my inbox on my to-do list it's just stuff that i'm putting off so i don't want to do that stuff now but i was reading some of the comments on last night's video and there were, there's a few general questions on here um, that i and just like silly little things that i thought i would reply to i stopped doing my question of the day so maybe i'll bring that back again so if you have a burning question that you'd like me to answer within a vlog i'll always try and answer it at the end of each vlog let's try and kick this off again leave hashtag qotd so question of the day in your comments but a couple of a couple of silly um questions not silly but like you know just small questions i've seen in this one um <laughs> who broke the kitchen window dion has asked it was charlie <laughs> charlie obviously we've got the most beautiful i love the windows in this house they're georgian window frames with really thin um single glazed glass single single pane single glazed because that's what we have to have for the grade two listing but it is paper thin it is so thin that even when the chap that comes to do the window cleaning comes with his brush i'm literally biting my nails the whole time because it is such fragile glass i mean it seems kind of stupid and i was actually watching grand designs last night with charlie and somebody has invented basically the thickness of normal glass but as double glazed so it's a lot more energy efficient at keeping the heat in but I don't know if English Heritage would let us have that, but I might make some inquiries. But anyway, a couple of weeks ago when it was really warm outside, Charlie and I both had our laptops outside and we took an extension cable out there. And then when Charlie was bringing the extension cable back in, the plug swung back on itself when he was bringing it back through the window and the plug actually smashed into the window, which um, it's just one of those moments where your heart like drops and you're so annoyed because it's like a split second thing and it's gonna cost us hundreds of pounds to replace. So that's really annoying. Um, name of nail polish brand. <laughs> be nice sometimes if you write please in your questions but this person may not have english as their first language so i'm gonna let you off at the moment this is cnd shellac and it's the color unfold oh, i never remember this unfolded and it's uncovered i think it's actually uncovered from cnd got it done at london grace um someone else just said cracked window question mark Loads of people have commented that I kept calling the donut the Snicky Gervais, whereas actually it was in fact the Snicky Minaj. <laughs> Whoops. A lot of questions about the songs that I use, the background music, and it's always from a website called Epidemic Sound. Um, I think you have to have an account in order to use the music. You definitely have to have an account in order to put it in your YouTube videos, but every song that I ever have in my YouTube videos is from Epidemic sounds couple of uh, someone's written about um the amount of adverts within the video and i have mentioned this before as 
content creators we don't actually have that much control over how many ads you see well if it bothers you and if you watch a lot of long vlogs and you get served a lot of adverts within them sometimes you might get served two sometimes you might get served like 10 and yeah i know it's really annoying obviously the content is free so some of these things you just kind of have to grin and bear it and I'm sorry about that, I'm sorry if it affects your viewing experience, but I would highly recommend getting YouTube Premium if you do find that it bothers you. It's it's more affordable than like Netflix and all the other streaming services. So if you do watch a lot of YouTube, I would highly recommend getting YouTube Premium. There's loads of other benefits as well, like you can have it have your YouTube video on in the background so you can like swipe away. On your phone and you know normally that would stop the video but maybe you want to keep listening so that's something else that's really useful um and i think you can download more videos if you get youtube premium as well but also i don't control the number of ads that you get so if i go on my youtube studio app for example i can see yeah i can see what my cpm is and that is the cost per thousand views from various countries Usually the US and Australia are pretty high and the UK is on this top five list as well but at the moment Sweden is showing the highest CPM and so what I think that means obviously that that is the price that I get paid per 1000 views if you live in a country with a high CPM you're more likely to get served ads so sometimes I'll see on these comments like someone's like Josie I had eight ads in this video and someone else will reply me like really I only got one so yeah it does vary but as I said if it bothers you I would highly recommend getting um, YouTube Premium. What software do you use for editing your videos? I literally use iMovie. I think I'm probably one of the only YouTubers <laughs> that does this full time that still uses the most basic software, but I don't think you need any jazzy editing. Like, I think iMovie is absolutely fine. Um, the camera that I use is the Canon G7X Mark II. It's brilliant for vlogging. Someone's asked where our bed frame is from. I think you probably mean in our master bedroom, the green and gold one. It's from a company called the French Bedroom... French Bedroom Company? Or French Bedroom Co. I'll leave it linked down below. Uh, someone has asked what I meant when I said that my friends had had some bad experiences in London lately. Um, one of my friends hasn't mentioned it online, so I'm not gonna tell her story for her, but um, she had her phone stolen essentially in a not very nice way in London. I mean, having a phone stolen is never gonna happen in a nice way, but yeah, it, it really shook her up. Um, and another friend, actually Amelia, who I went for lunch with, did explain what happened to her online and she and a friend were also um, mugged in London and they actually were, um, I don't know if they were held at knife point or if knives were, were drawn to scare them. I did actually have a bad experience when we very first moved to London, so you may remember that Charlie and I used to live in Clapham, which is on the edge of Brixton, which now I feel like is not really that bad, but back then, Brixton did have quite a bad reputation, to be honest, Clapham <laughs> doesn't have the best reputation right now, but to be honest, aside from the time around this particular incident, I never felt unsafe living around there. I would get the tube to Brixton like at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and I would walk home in the dark and I never, I never felt scared. Looking back, it probably was a bit dodgy, me tittering teetering around on my heels with probably a designer handbag on show probably holding my phone out i think i was quite lucky touch wood but it was probably about six months after we did move in to the house in clapham my mum and i had been shopping and we got off a bus and a guy also got off the bus from the front doors we got off the back doors at the same time walked towards us I didn't realise it happened until I heard my mum shouting, my necklace, my necklace! And basically this guy had tried to grab her handbag but ended up, um, I think she had it on the crook of her arm so we couldn't actually grab it, so I ended up grabbing mum's necklace which was actually part of some jewellery that um, used to belong to my dad. So monetarily, not worth very much, but sentimentally it was worth a huge amount. And you never know how you're going to react in these situations and I guess my adrenaline just kicked in and I just dropped my shopping bags ran straight across the road chasing after this guy and he was a big guy big fast guy um, could have been like a professional rugby player he was huge we both ran across the road and didn't even look at traffic and i was shouting at him i was i don't think i've ever called anyone such nasty names as i called this guy i was like come back here you scum you blah, blah, blah. Like, it was 
yeah, a lot of shouting happened. And then he ran into what can only be described as a maze of houses across the road from where we used to live. And you know that, you know that game, is it called Mousetrap? or rat, rat, rat run or something. That is what it felt like in this area because all the houses looked the same. There were corridors, there were alleyways and he just disappeared. And I'm still in the middle of this housing area, feeling a little bit vulnerable, not knowing where he was, not knowing if he had anything on him, just shouting the, this, these obscenities at him. I was like, not worth anything, you blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, so he actually ran through this housing area, cut a corner, and by some coincidence ended up getting back on the same bus that we had got off of earlier because the bus goes around a corner if you know Clapham it was the 35 we got off at Clapham Park Road and then it continues round two stops um, and then it's at Clapham Common so he got back on the bus at Clapham Common some people that were on the bus had seen my mum having her necklace stolen and were on the phone to the police and explaining what happened and then they were like oh my god this guy has literally just got back on the bus so the police were then able to intercept the bus a couple of stops later down at the other side of Clapham Common got on the bus arrested him found my mum's necklace in his boxer shorts Ew. <laughs> and he was already on bail for drug crimes so I think he went to Brixton prison for quite a long time so yeah that was that was our only touch wood that was our only bad experience living in London and we did get broken into once as well <laughs> oh dear I've never I've never shared that online before I don't think I was I don't think I was doing YouTube when that happened or maybe like very early days I don't think I was sharing much online anyway I've managed to kill 13 minutes by just rambling to you guys about goodness knows what so I'm I've got a few more emails now I'm gonna crack on with a little bit more work and I'll catch up with you when my order arrives. Yay! It is so typical after all that time just sat there twiddling my thumbs, every delivery decided to arrive at once from both entrances to the house. We've got like the chapel entrance and then the main entrance, but very excitingly my George Smith delivery was one of the three deliveries that all arrived at the same time. So over there we have the cloverleaf poof and just here we have my Soho drum. Oh my goodness, are you excited, Dickie? I'm just making the Nicholson's Chaps their coffees and then I'm going to unbox this one with you or unpackage this one with you down here. Um, and then as soon as Charlie gets back from Quince and Clover, we will take up my poof. than I could possibly have imagined. Obviously I knew that it was gonna be amazing quality and absolutely gorgeous because everything that George Smith does is, but oh my gosh, this has exceeded my expectations on every level. That's probably the best light. Sorry, Dex Dexy just um, scratching himself to show you. This is my Soho baby drum. That is the technical term. And this is a completely bespoke made to order one. They do have, um, actually this is amazing timing because they do have a sale on the Soho babies at the moment with the standard ones, which don't come with this trim. This was something that I chose to add. And this is um, my personal choice of a bespoke fabric but the sale I think it's something incredible like 40% off the um, the Soho baby drums in the George Smith fabric I'm gonna leave that link down below with the discount code because honestly this there that sale is incredible I think I might look at purchasing another couple for um, straw top cottage but yeah I chose every and so that's for the George Smith collection ones but this one is completely bespoke I think I I showed you guys in some vlogs a little while ago the 
level of detail that we went into when it came to choosing this fabric and here's a close-up it's this beautiful pink and cream in fact i'm pretty sure this is this is a george smith fabric but the trim is um something that i added on so this is the most beautiful textured boucle and i think it just gives it such a kind of <laughs> look at dexy using his snout to try and get my attention gives it such gorgeous texture makes it look a little bit more Dexy, old fashioned, um, a little bit more classic and heritage. And then you've got this champagne colored trim, which just finishes it off in such a spectacular way. Look at this boy. You always need to be the star of the show, don't you? And if you're not, you'll just use your schnooter to get mommy's attention. It's just made so, so beautifully. Oh, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So this is what I will perch on when I'm doing my makeup in the mornings. Oh, I'm so pleased with this. And then it's got a solid wood base as well. So these are the armchairs, which uh, these were actually our very first George Smith, Smith, Smith purchases here at the house and started our love affair with the brand. But I'm going to take this up to the dressing room. Going to have to wait for Charlie to get back. He's just said he'll be home in 15 minutes to take the poof up. And guys, you wait until you see this, honestly. It's this fabric, but a clover leaf um, shape, and it's also got a tassel down at the bottom, which we thought would look a little bit weird on the drum, um, but I just can't wait to get these in situ. What do you think, my chicken nugget? Are you having a little sniff? Oh, does he get your seal of approval, does it, my little floofaboon? Oh, we need a haircut, we do. And so here is the Soho Baby buttoned footstool in situ and height wise I've just just practiced sitting down on here to do my makeup in this little mirror and height wise it is just absolutely perfect. I love the colour compared to the rug as well. This is actually not the best lighting to show you. You can see, <laughs> excuse my socks, you can see a little bit more clearly here. Um, the color of this and the reason why i chose this fabric was because it had all the shades that i wanted in there it's got this kind of champagne champagne -y shade which makes it feel a little bit warmer pink for obvious reasons and then it's even got some little white bits in it which really matches in with the coloring here in the dressing room even in the reflection in the mirror over there it just looks absolutely gorgeous and comfort and height wise could not be any better so that looks fantastic but this space is really going to be transformed when we get the clover leaf poof in here as well We now have a brand new, beautiful, amber, yellow, mustardy colour, leather, very old antique armchair down in the drawing room. And we also ended up picking up a little side table as well. So it really is a day of new furniture today. But very excitingly, the time has come. Charlie and I have just lifted the cloverleaf poof up into my dressing room. So it is time for the big reveal. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready. It is so stunning. You can see its reflection. And here it is. Oh my goodness. Lighting is not ideal because it's pouring with rain outside. Let me pop my phone down. But here she is. Is this not just the most gorgeous piece of furniture for a dressing room? I think it just looks, it really is the finishing piece of the jigsaws. You can see the two beautiful bespoke pieces side by side and when I tell you we went through so many different samples for both the fabric and all the trims with George Smith literally anything is possible you can dream up your most beautiful fabric and trim combinations anything is possible for them I'm going to leave their details down below because if you have a furniture dream that you're looking for someone to make come true, they are your go-tos. So we 
chose this spectacular. It's obviously the same material as I was able to show you earlier in slightly better lighting. Same material, this beautiful boucle, and again, it just picks up all the right colours from the room, from my cabinetry to my clothes and even the rug. Although I'm not sure if this rug is going to stay, I might. I, I am always on the lookout for a slightly better quality one, but size-wise, and it's better than it's definitely better than nothing. So yeah, the cloverleaf poof. We went for this. It's kind of like an off-white, almost champagne-coloured trim. And the trim is on the cushion top and then at the and then it matches perfectly the tassels as well and down in the office i still have a tote bag full of different tassel styles we went through so many different styles until we decided that this one was the best match with this material i never actually thought about it like this before but it's actually perfect that it's right by my shoe cupboards as well so i can perch down here when i want to pop my shoes on and also something else is great please excuse how scruffy i look i have not topped up my makeup all day and this is just my lounging around the house outfit so another thing that's amazing about this is that it is on wheels so when i want to film my videos or for any reason i can just scoot it around and i think they're called the caster casters casters wheels underneath are actually antique brass which i didn't even ask for but they must have um maybe that's the standard but they just work so perfectly and oh, of course because it's george smith the filling is of the best quality it is so comfortable i am incredibly happy with this It actually looks quite cute over there in the corner. I don't think I would ever leave it in there normally, um, but if I was filming a video with, say, this backdrop, then it is quite a nice addition, or I could even scoot it over to that corner. I'll just have a play around when I'm next filming a video, but I love how it perfectly matches my clothes, the cupboards, the whole room. It just could not be any more perfect. So hats off to George Smith for creating my absolute dream piece of furniture. I've decided now that my powder room is looking fabulous and I need to tackle this rail. This rail is where I bring things that I want to wear or I want to show you or are new in or I just haven't bothered to put away. So as you can see, it's starting to buckle at the top where it's so heavy. So I need to have a real organization. And there are a couple of bits in here which are fairly new that I haven't showed you yet. So I thought I would pull some of them out. I am just the biggest lover of Gilets practical wear. And this arrived from Jules. In fact, let's go and try it on in the dressing room. I just love a good gilet, whether I'm gardening or going for a dog walk, I'm definitely going to be keeping this so we can take the tag off. But you can see the way that it's fitted, it's got this little panel detail down the side, really lovely. Very practical little pockets, perfect size for my phone or my camera. Feels nice and warm as well with the, fa with the padded fabric. And then... On the inside, that's a nice surprise, we have got lots of Fenella, Fenella pheasants on the inside and it really, it actually goes really nicely with the outfit I'm wearing today. And then also from Jules, I wish I had worn this today instead of my barber, it's just so easy for me to grab my barber that I very rarely come up here to find a better alternative. But this is, as you can see, the most beautiful pink trench coat. Trench is the ultimate wardrobe classic, especially at this time of year when we are faced with, I can't even see that it's pouring with rain, but trust me, it is. And in my favourite colour, this beautiful pink, I think with the length I potentially need to wear some slightly heeled boots. And I think this fabric is actually coated because it very much feels almost water repellent, but still really beautiful and soft. So this is a great piece of outerwear for spring, summer from Jules. And then Jules also sent over very kindly these slides, which are going to be fantastic. I'm going to swap my um, Doc Martens for these in the kitchen. They can be my dashing out to the greenhouse shoes. That reminds me, I haven't watered the plants at my greenhouse today. Hmm, maybe some of the cracks in the ceiling will have enabled some of the rainwater to go in. But yeah, really practical, very cute for just running out into the garden. This is something that I really don't want to happen and I will not allow to happen, which is a pile up 
of clothes on the poof because then I just have the world's messiest dressing room. But the reason why these are here is because I'm thinking I'm gonna have a bit of a wardrobe switch around. So I always said, obviously in this dressing room, I have plenty of space for everything, but there are certain parts of this wardrobe room which I would say are prime wardrobe real estate. And one of those areas in particular is this cupboard down here, which is currently full of my winter coats. And to be honest, I don't feel like I'm going to be accessing them quite as much now that we are approaching the middle of May, which I cannot quite believe we're in the middle of May, but here we are. So instead, what I think I'm gonna do is pull out all of my long dresses from here, which is starting to get rather crammed in. And I think I'm gonna try cramming my coats in here instead um, because I don't need to be able to ruffle through my coats but they're still gonna be accessible if I need them, whereas I'd like to be able to ruffle through my dresses and hang these beautiful ones up as well, and they just are not gonna fit in here. So I'm gonna give it a go. It might be a big waste of time and it might not work, they might not fit, but we don't have anything to lose. dresses are in. I've never actually put anything on that top shelf there. Maybe I could put um, special occasion hats. I'm not sure. I've got my straw hats in these ones, but maybe I'll put special occasion hats in there. I have got a couple. I know that's the winter area. Yeah, I've got a couple of nice kind of wedding or races hats. Maybe I'll pop all of those on the top there. But yeah, I am very glad that I took the time to do that. There is no way I would have been able to see any of my dresses properly if all of these had been crammed into less than half of this space over on the other side. And what I've done is I've actually put my fluffier coats, which are really bulky and won't crease in this bag here. And I'll probably tuck that in the back of one of these sections because they're so deep where the walls go down. But yeah, I'm really happy that I can now see all my lovely dresses. I can rummage through and choose my dress far more easily this way. I haven't put them in a huge particular order other than the fact that they're slightly more casual down this side. And then I have put my mostly needle and thread dresses, to be honest, down here. These are just the most spectacular occasion dresses. So... Yeah, the big voluminous, fantastic embellished ones are more down that side. So I'm going to give this a little bit of a tidy up and then I think that is a good job done. Okay, I've spent the last half an hour just going through various areas, moving things, having a little bit of a clear out as well. Look at that background. That looks so amazing. And now it is 7pm. Lewis, our chiropractor, is here. So I'm going to have my treatment now, which I always look forward to so much. It's not relaxing so much but i always feel great afterwards and i like to take my makeup off and um fully zone into it so i'm gonna round the vlog off here i hope you enjoyed this vlog a real mishmash of loads of different things um so yeah if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and if you want to shop my wardrobe by the way the bits that i'm just like regularly clearing out make sure you're signed up to my newsletter um if you sign up now you'll get the one that went out last friday which has a link to shop my wardrobe and that's the easiest way to do it. So yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. I wonder if I've hit 500,000 by the time this video goes up. We're so close, we are so close. And that's all from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.